Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter is receiving hospice care at home right now at the age of 98. As people around the world send him wishes of comfort and peace, they're also celebrating his accomplishments. Among the most memorable, his fight against a tropical disease called guinea worm. It's caused by a parasite which infects people and animals when they drink water that is contaminated. We're about to show you disturbing pictures of some of the complications. Carter traveled to Nigeria and Ghana to see firsthand. About 3.5 million people had the parasite in the mid-1980s when Carter turned his attention to the problem. If the worm comes out of a joint, say in your knee, the, it swells up and destroys the tissue. So the aftermath is very similar to polio. It completely debilitates that knee and, and sometimes the knee, is, the leg is, is crippled for the rest of one's life. And of course, these kids can't go to school. The, the pain is too great and they need uh, medical care. And if it's an adult, they can't go into the field to plant the crops. And uh, it's a devastating blow economically. And obviously, the personal pain is terrible. The Nobel Peace Prize winner traveled to one village in Nigeria where nearly everyone had guinea worm. We were driving along and, and at elementary school, children had a big sign that says, watch out guinea worm, here comes Jimmy Carter. <laughs> That was almost as good as the Nobel Prize for me. <laughs> In 2015, uh, when Carter announced that cancer had actually spread to his brain, he immediately turned the spotlight to guinea worm, saying that he wanted it to be completely eradicated before uh, he dies. Uh, the Carter Center says case numbers were down to just 13, just 13, from 3.5 million to 13. Uh, last year. Time now for the exchange. Joining me live now is Adam Weiss, the director for the Carter Center's Guinea Worm Eradication Program. Adam, thank you so much for being with us. What a legacy. I mean, this is incredible. For people who don't really know much about Guinea Worm, just explain to us how dangerous it is and how widespread of an issue it was, of a health concern it was, uh, before Jimmy Carter sort of turned his attention to it back in the mid-1980s. Well, thanks so much for having us join you today. Uh, certainly you saw in the intro footage, guinea worm is a terrible, nasty disease. It debilitates, uh, it cripples, uh, and it also leads to secondary infection. Uh, but the, this three foot long worm that comes out of people a year after they become initially exposed to the disease was across 21 countries uh, in Africa, the Middle East and Asia, mostly, however, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and it's just absolutely devastating. Three and a half million people per year in 1986. Uh, and once C President Carter and others uh, really got involved, they were able to really bring those cases down. And as you said, just 13 last year, which is really an amazing feat. I have so many questions, but I think the first one is, why did Carter, I mean, this, this of all the illnesses around the world, uh, guinea worm certainly is not the most famous, the most sort of funded, the most well-known. Why did President Carter turn his attention to this one in particular? President Carter turned his attention to it for some of those very reasons. It was neglected. Before people even were talking about neglected tropical diseases, uh, he was helping shine a spotlight on people that were disconnected politically, socially, and economically and really based on his own character and his own beliefs that we're all equal and we all human rights and, and health is a human right and making that connection very early on, uh, he really saw that this was something that, that needed to be taken on. And I think the other piece to add is that, you know, th this is a disease oftentimes of the most marginalized uh, and this was a real opportunity to show the world that, that in fact we were addressing those challenges hand in hand. So from 3.5 million people in 1986, um, so we're talking almost 40 years later to just 13. I mean, what is involved in that? Just take us through the step by step, uh, just in terms of what is involved in com virtually, I would say, completely eradicating a disease. How did you get started? So really the foundation is working in partnership with the National Ministries of Health. That is the core of how the global program has operated. It's not a Carter Center program. It is the national ministries that lead the charge. So setting up community-based surveillance systems, just like in COVID-19 pandemic, you have to know where the disease is in order to implement interventions. Of course, knowing that we do have one or two hands tied behind our back 
in that we do not have a vaccine or a cure or a therapy to treat it, uh, but really making sure we know where it is. And then through peer-to-peer -peer health education, through very simple pipe straw filters donated by Vestergaard Fransden, uh, making sure that people really understand how the disease works. That is, if you have it or an animal has it and they enter water, they infect that water source and anybody who might use that water source can become infected about one year later, which makes the behavior change component very complicated and difficult. President Carter is in hospice. Um, you know, he is almost 100 years old. I mean, this is a huge part of his legacy. I mean, you think about what he's achieved. I mean, everybody talks about, you know, going from the, a peanut farmer in Georgia to becoming president. And that is amazing. That is quite a feat. However, it's things like this, you know, that he will really be remembered for, the lives that he touched, uh, especially, I mean, our show covers Africa quite a bit. So uh, especially for me, as, as someone who is from West Africa, this means so much. And he traveled to a village in my country. How much comfort mm. does this give uh, President Carter that he, I mean, not my, my producer was actually saying in my ear before we went to you, there aren't that many people in the world who can say they are behind the near eradication, eradication rather, of a disease. I mean, that is an incredible achievement. How much comfort does that give uh, President Carter in his final days? Well, right now he's he's very much at peace with his wife and family at home. Uh, he also smiled the other day when he received a report that as of right now, we have zero human infections in the world. So again, uh, we we do expect some cases this year. That's not going to surprise us. Uh, but he is very much humbled by the strong leadership of the National Ministries of Health. Uh, we were actually just in meetings with several ministers of health. They're leading the charge, and, and they know that while his days might well be numbered, uh, that they're going to carry on uh, the legacy uh, to see Guinea worm gone from this planet. Incredible. Adam Weiss, uh, live for us, director of the Carter Center's Guinea worm eradication program. Thank you so much for being on the show.